Welcome to another edition of PCW Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. I'm Norm Waymer, along with the former champion Andy Shane. And we got a uh, terrific night of action for you here on uh, PCW. We want, we want to remind you of a couple of things. Uh, we, first, we want to thank some of our sponsors. The Seaway Marketplace on uh, Cherry and Bancroft. We thank you very much. It's uh, uh, absolutely, uh, we, we thank you so much for being on fantastic place to go if you're whatever you're looking for for your groceries the best chicken in town by the way uh, in the deli also uh mike seeger's red wing shoes on north reynolds road also we thank you very very much also the beer stube the toledo academy of beauty the somerset, somerset bingo, bingo hall. hall and if you support our sponsors when you support our sponsors you support power bomb championship wrestling and you know what we will continue to bring you the best wrestling you see in the world here in Toledo. All right, we're going to get into more about the card coming up on Sunday, January the 25th. But I want to uh, stress to everybody, if you want to get your tickets in advance, and this is the type of thing you are going to want to get your tickets in advance, go to our website. It's PCWExcitement.com. PCWExcitement.com will take credit cards, take pal -pal, or PayPal, uh, and uh, you'll get your tickets, and you'll get them uh, reserved. So you'll make sure you'll be able to get in. For this big card coming up on January the 25th. You can also pick them up at Somerset Hall and at the IBC itself at the International Boxing Club. Yeah, we're going to have uh, some tickets over there after the first of the year. And uh, so after uh, after we get past the holidays, you'll be able to pick up a few tickets there. But it's so much easier just to get them online, a couple of clicks, and, and you'll get them through PCWExcitement.com. All right, uh, January the 25th, still we're uh, discussing some of the fallout of what was announced last week. The PCW Heavyweight Championship, Phil Nitro Monahan, uh, still recognized as the uh, PCW Champion. That's uh, part of the belt that uh, really that, that you took over uh, when we had the talent agreement with CIW and uh, uh, Phil ended up with the, uh, with the title. He has it right now and will have to defend against his, I'm guessing now, former tag team partner Malice, who from what we understand has uh, the mod father in his corner. These guys were uh, were best friends, more than best friends, almost brothers. I don't know. You can say what you want, but I've been around both of them. I don't think Malice was so down and out that mod father. You've seen the mod father. Like he had to give him money. Like he would give him money. You know the man. I don't really penny, know him, but what I'm learning, I don't like. Yeah. So I don't think it was that bad off. I think there's just some jealousy involved here. And now they got a. The, it's. It's gonna be it's gonna be an explosion. People didn't think they'd see Nitro versus Malice. Here we are. It's here now, January twenty fifth. Those guys have been uh, eerily silent, and I, I just I I'm really looking forward to hearing from both of those guys at some point to find out exactly what's uh, what's going on and what the real, real story is. Because anytime you hear it out of a third party and you hear it out of somebody like the Mod Father, I you know take that with a grain of salt. You can't take anything the Mod Father says for anything. The man is nothing but a big box of hot air. He's a fruitcake. You know what? His birth certificate was nothing more than an apology letter from the condom company. The guy's an idiot. <laughs> I'm just saying. I have not touched that with a 10-foot pole. All right, we're going to have uh, for the main event here on uh, tonight's show, you will see the Gentleman's Club defend against CIA. They'll defend the PCW uh, tag team titles. We'll tell you more about the card coming up. Let's get you into our first match. And uh, we got uh, the ladies, actually, for our first match. We occasionally have the, uh, the, the ladies on the card. This is uh, Cindy battling Amanda Ruffin. Two of the most athletic women you'll ever see. I, I even look forward to this. All right, let's take a look at it. Cindy and Amanda Ruffin on PCW Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. Looks like Cindy is going to signal for a test of strength here. Cindy does have the size advantage. Test of strength happening right now. And look at that. Amanda Ruffin taking her right back into the ropes. And the referee will call for the rope break. But they're still kind of, uh, you know, fighting back and forth. Monkey flip. Nope, they're still connected. Trying to go for the quick pin. And now the reversal. And look at that, again. I know I call this, Norm. This is crazy. For every move, there's a counter move. And we just saw that right there. Back and forth, back and forth. Roll up from one person, roll up by the other. Yeah. 
Yeah, boy, Amanda Ruffin is just downright mean. I tried to get a few words with her in the locker room beforehand, and uh, boy, she does not even want to talk. Arm drag from Cindy stays right on that arm of Amanda Ruffin. Could have been just you. She was talking to me earlier. Yeah, you're probably right, Norm. I, I bet it was. I was really hoping you could do something maybe to boost my ego a little bit, but no, you just bring me right back down to earth, don't you? Just call it the way I see it. I suppose Cindy talked to you as well, didn't she? Well, yeah. Really? My gosh! The only one who wanted to talk to me was a sharp dressed man. And I'm concerned by that. <laughs> well, Cindy, she's a she's a major sweetheart. There's no question about that. Oh, yeah, she is. Enough. Very nice, very personable. Definitely a favorite here in uh, PCW Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. Amanda Ruffin has her back up to the feet and kind of doing a little bit of a face, wa a face wash there. Punches into the middle, off the ropes, reversal. Amanda Ruffin for the ride. There's your leapfrog. Thinks she outsmarted Cindy, but I don't think so. Arm drag. Wow. <laughs> Japanese-style arm drag. I, I do have to admit one thing, though. Really, the, the main reason Amanda Ruffin was talking to me was she, she just kept telling me to keep that guy with the funny hat away from me. That guy in the in the first row? You shouldn't say that about the fans. You're the one that is. Wait, you're, are you talking no. about me? Well, are you talking about me? I wasn't. She was. You're my boy. I tell you what, if I, I'm just saying. Now, if I give you a piece of paper with my number, would you uh, give that to her? If possible, slide that over. I think. Uh, you keep it for yourself, aren't you? <laughs> no, I, 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 I might want to save yourself the time. <laughs> All right, just uh, not even worth the effort. I don't that. think that's going to happen. So now, if I uh, invited her over to watch an episode of Glee, it just wouldn't work really well. <laughs> 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 so. no, I, think, I don't think that's going to work either. <laughs> Man, Ruffin has the advantage here. All into the hair of Cindy. Oh, gosh. The whips are up and over. My gosh. That'll snap the neck and very easy to uh, pull a disc out of place or anything. And again, we're seeing this new attitude of uh, Amanda Ruffin. Uh, it, it's just amazing how how just, I, I guess, you know, mad at the world she's become. Yeah, she's definitely mad at Cindy. There's no question. And she's taking her aggression out on Cindy right well, now. Well, you too, but that's something totally different. Yeah, we'll deal with that afterwards. Right now, she's dealing with Cindy, and Cindy trying to fight back. Very difficult down on her knees. Ruffin brings her back up, though. Whips her over with the snapmare. Off the ropes, head of steam. Very quick at a drop kick. Connected with that. Goes for the cover. And look at that with Amanda Ruffin. It's very good because, you know, we don't see this from a, a lot of competitors. They, they hit a big move like that, then they spend their time, you know, jawing with the fans and whatever. Amanda Ruffin went right for the cover, but then, you know, maybe I spoke too soon because now she's arguing with the ref. Just when you want to give her credit for something. Back into the hair of Cindy, driving her, using that hair to whip her face first into that middle turnbuckle. Well, Amanda Ruffin's gotten the advantage, and she hasn't let up yet. One Sorry. bit. No, not at all. Well, she does not like that referee either. And now she's choking. The be Wait. referee better be careful. She might just kick his tail. Yeah, I don't know if Amanda Ruffin's even concerned about getting disqualified. She might just go off and hit the ref at some point, just like you said. I don't know. What did you say in the back to take her I, off? I don't know. And Cindy's trying to fight back. There's just not a whole lot on those punches, though. And again, she's fighting from her knees, and it's so difficult to do that, to fight from that, that you know, the, the fight basically on your back. Oh, my gosh. Standing on her hair and pulling up on the arms. He clumps a hair on the mat when that's all over. It's like uh, Amanda Ruffin's going back into that again. She doesn't listen very well, does she? No, not at all. Rear chin lock right now, applied. And again, Amanda Ruffin doing what all the uh, all the smart wrestlers do is when they do that, they restrict that airflow of their opponent, but they also drape their weight over their opponent as well, just further wearing them out. Well, Cindy's got to figure out a way to reverse this. Yeah, this she, really, she you know, is, you know, some people just not their night. She has not had an answer here. You know, you'll see the, the star oh, baseball that's player. That's just a choke right yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. It just seems, you know, you know maybe at this point, you know, for, for Cindy, it's just not her night. I don't know. You know, Derek Jeter goes 0 for 5 every once in a while. Peyton Manning throws an interception, you know, just. Yeah, but Amanda Ruffin's gotten the advantage and she's kept it. She's yeah, exactly. Very methodical. Uh oh, got caught though. 
with that jawbreaker, Amanda uh, Ruffin took her attention away for just a split second. That'll rearrange your feelings. Yes, it will. So this is what Cindy needs now. If she is going to mount something, it has to happen right now. And the crowd wants to see it. Clothesline. Another clothesline. No, a back elbow. And Cindy is feeling it. Amanda Ruffin back into the ropes. And she is going to go for a ride. There's the whip in. She's caught. That big side slam. Bam. Oh. Right in the center I of the ring. Slam. Oh, it'll be enough. Not oh, quite. Oh. She even had that leg hooked. And the referee was right there, Norm. I think Cindy can sense now that since this momentum has turned, she has got to put it away and put it away fast. A couple of forearms. There's the whip. No, there's the reversal. Cindy goes in, hits that buckle hard, head of steam from Amanda Ruffin. There's a roll through, though. A roll out of the corner. Amanda Ruffin blocks it, sits down. Oh, she's got her hands on the rope. She did that. The referee did not see that. Using those two metal ropes for additional leverage, your winner is Amanda Ruffin. Your winner of the fall of the match, Amanda Ruffin. On oh, Cindy is just in disbelief right now. Maybe she'll be in a better mood now for you. Uh, she might be, I don't know, but I still don't think I should press my luck. No, I kind of doubt it. Don't think I should press my luck. Cindy is, well, uh, you know, she really thought she had things going her way toward the end, but Amanda Ruffin uh, comes out on top. They may not have settled this. Amanda Ruffin, your winner in this match, and this is a, a feud between two wrestlers that have been going for quite some time. Two spectacularly athletic women. I, you know, I don't think we've heard the last of them. That's all I can say. All right. Uh, we have... Uh, Coming up a little bit later on, we'll uh, show you Phil Atlas in action. He will be uh, part of the first ever cruiserweight title match here in PCW, and uh, we're going to have uh, the race its maker, Rick Baker, sit in here for a little bit. Well, that's going to happen. Um, I look forward. That's the match I think you said before that could steal this show. Um, I'm sure they're both disappointed that Andy Shane's not in the match with them, but it is what it is. I know the righteous maker, Rick Baker, D-Ray, Rick Cobra, I don't know, whatever he wants to call himself now. Uh, you know, he's kept the haircut I gave him. That's all that matters because that way we know he cares. You were so good last week. You got through it and didn't even, uh, didn't even attack him. So it's, uh, this I, week, not so much. I was trying to turn over a new leaf, but it, you just, know, it all came back. You can't be happy that there's three title matches and Andy Shane's not in one of them. Believe me, they'll all be thinking about me one way or another. Aren't we all? <laughs> all right, let's take a time out. Uh, we'll come back, and when we come back, we will uh, we will go back in time, and uh, we'll show you some from the great Wojo. I'll be there in spirit, if nothing else. <laughs> all right, so we'll do that when we come back. It's not PC, it's PCW Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. Breathe deep, the cooling air, sun setting tonight. shop at Seaway Marketplace because they have the fastest lines in town. Seaway Marketplace. This is my store. I buy almost all of my produce here at Seaway Marketplace for my home and my restaurant. This is my store. Seaway Marketplace Deli has the best chicken in town. This is my store. I shop at Seaway Marketplace because of the big selection of meat and seafood. This is my store. Seaway Marketplace, corner of Cherry and Bancroft. Seaway Marketplace. This is my store. Your career will occupy one-third of your life. Shouldn't it be fun, profitable, and secure? The Toledo Academy of Beauty has successfully trained over 10,000 graduates in the cosmetology industry. Call 419-478-6660 for a free brochure. We also offer beauty services by supervised students. Even professional wrestlers like Dr. Jerry Graham is a client. Have fun, be cool, choose the right beauty school. It's Toledo Academy of Beauty. It's the Beer Stube, located at 5333 Monroe Street, the home of the NFL Sunday ticket. Catch your favorite game at the Beer Stube. We have a brand new kitchen open daily for lunch and dinner at 11 a.m. At the Beer Stube, it's a Wi-Fi hotspot and enjoy free pool from Sunday through Wednesday and premier karaoke Wednesday night through Saturday night. It's where bar, grill, and good times come together. It's the Beer Stube, 5333 Monroe Street, online at ToledoBS.com. Since 1905, Red Wing Shoe Company has been making purpose-built work footwear. The skilled employees in our three U.S. factories build over 1.2 million pairs of shoes annually. We are the largest Red Wing shoe dealer in northwestern Ohio with over 2,500 pairs in stock. Stop by our newly renovated store at 2122 North Reynolds Road. Shoes and boots that have served generations of hard-working people. Breathe deep, the cooling air, sun setting 
Back we are, PCW Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. I'm Norm Wehmer along with uh, Andy Shane as we're counting down the uh, weeks until the next live event for PCW on January the 25th. International Boxing Club, 525 Earlwood Avenue, East Toledo, uh, right off of Star and I-280. Three big title matches on the card. We mentioned the PCW heavyweight title match. Phil Nitro Monahan defend his title against his uh, former tag team partner, Malice. We're going to get to that cruiserweight uh, title match coming up. Uh, also, for the PCW tag team titles, and actually, you were the, kind of the last one to hold those belts. With Sean Casey, and uh, needless to say, we remember discussing the uh, peck injury when I tore my peck. I still have some unfinished business with Rick Baker, with William Studd, and with the Asian Assassins. Isn't it funny how that works out? I'm, you know, it is what it is, but uh, we're going to mix the pot a little bit, bring up the brew. We're going to take it and slap it against the wall and see what sticks. Well, we're going to have uh, for the PCW vacant tag team titles, the Asian Assassins. Going to have the Mod Father in their corner and a uh, team new to PCW, Jack Thriller, Justin Maine. These guys are, are young, they're exciting, and I, I'm really interested to see how, uh, how they're going to interact. They can match move for move with the Asian Assassins. These guys are fast, they're strong, they're capable, and they know that they have the technical knowledge to take on the Asian Assassins and meet them move for move. It's a chance to be a wild match too. Let's uh, go back in the archives here for a little bit and uh, let's uh, check out a match from uh, the great Wojo, of course, who's uh, uh, from Toledo. He was on the uh, 1980 Olympic team and uh, uh, he was uh, champion for quite a while. The great Wojo, one of the greatest amateur wrestlers ever and in my view one of the greatest pro wrestlers ever i love the wojo and we're gonna see wojo is absolutely one of the best the legend uh great wojo against sunny pride that just jars the whole body in I for the count oh uh, did he kick out yeah. i believe he did yeah well we give him some credit here sunny pride i don't know whether he kicked out or wojo lifted him up but sort of I, hard to tell. But we hear Graham shouting, pick him up, pick him up. Uh, that was a Another suplex. An amateur suplex. Yeah. In for the count again now. Let's see. Yeah. No, I'm not obviously very clearly there. That's, right I, Dr. that's what I told you. He t told him to pick him up. Well, Joe laid in a big forearm on Sonny Pride. Big body slam. Uh oh, now that's a good one. The great Wojo on the middle rope, coming down, up, sledgehammer. Yeah. That just had to really cross his eyes. Graham told him to suplex him again. Well, we're seeing quite a variety of suplexes from the great Wojo this week. Now, this may be a submission hold, Bruiser. No, I think he's going to suplex. There he goes. Yep, you're right. Yeah. Well, that's, that's another amateur suplex. It's not his time yet. More punishment, more punishment. It's not his time. The guy has been beaten for quite some time. That's what I told you. See, there is. Ooh, backbreaker. And Rojo once again refusing to pin the man. Another example of how Graham's army is just plain downright brutal. Well, what are they going to do now? I think so, he's... Oh, oh. <laughs> he knocked, knocked him stiff that time. He knocked his head out. Oh, he knocked his head out again. I don't think he can catch his breath the way he was sucking for air there. Oh. Look at him. Yeah. He's had the wind just totally knocked out of him. Aren't you glad you're a commentator, Bruiser? Aren't you glad you're sitting there like some kind of a jerk? I don't understand how you take it, Bruiser. No, I don't, I don't really. You don't have much choice, I guess. When the match is over, I go, I go back there and I hit the wall a couple times, that's it. I don't believe that. The great Wojo, Dr. Jerry Graham still not satisfied with the incredible amount of punishment they've applied on Sonny Pride here. Wojo in for the count again, we'll see what happens. Now still, no go, no pin. Er I think the referee called it, Bruiser. I think the referee ha absolutely had it there. It was obvious that Sonny Pride was beaten some time ago. 
Yeah, that's what it is. We'll you get might, it. You might see the referee threw in the towel. Yeah. And I, I think that was a good move. Because I don't I didn't see him pin. And now look at them both. They're double teaming the guy now. How much more can this put? Oh my lord. That, that knocked the hair off of him. It's obvious this poor guy can't take a whole lot more here. Graham. This is typical of Dr. Jerry Graham once the man has been beaten to such a state as Pride has been to yeah. continue. He's going to the top slope. That's uh, uncalled for. I tell you, he just gets so much. I'm telling you, they're going too far. Yeah. Now he's going to come out on us. Oh, oh. He never even hit the ring. He never hit the ring. Oh. And I don't think this poor guy is done yet. Yeah. Right in front of our table, right in front of Dick the Bruiser. And Graham, especially, is just asking for it here from Dick the Bruiser. Graham is just asking for it. Certainly, I think the scene would be a, quite a lot different if it were Dick the Bruiser there instead of Sonny Pride. I guarantee you, I wouldn't be laying down there. I believe it. The Wojo, once again, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, the great Wojo, your, your winner in the match. I didn't expect anything less. You know what? You put Wojo in a wrestling match, someone's getting to learn themselves intimately because he's going to bury them. I want to uh, let everybody know about uh, one of the other matches. Uh, at least uh, we have uh, another wrestler signed to participate, and uh, that's going to be Broderick Shaw. And he is somebody new to uh, Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. I haven't seen him in person. What I've uh, seen on tape is uh, uh, pretty... Uh, uh, pretty startling. You, you tell everybody a little bit about him. Well, first off, here's Broderick Shaw. At about 60 pounds. I'm sorry. At about 70 pounds. And a really bad freaking attitude. The man's a monster. He's big as a house. Built like a brick outhouse. And uh, and on top of that, as fast and can wrestle too. See the type of guy that makes you want to wrestle in the cruiserweight division? You know what? Be it big, be it small, line them up, I'll knock them down. The big guys, they hit you, you need to knock down hard, but you get them running for five, six minutes, and pretty soon they're begging for help. Uh, all right. Uh, just the way it is. Spoken. That's pretty much the answer I thought I was going to get out of this guy. All right. Uh, let's, uh, let's take a time out, and uh, when we come back, we'll get the righteous maker, Rick Baker, in here. Ooh, I'm excited about that. I'm sure he'll have something fun to say. I think you should probably leave before he comes in here. I'm just saying. It's okay. Uh, and uh, we'll take a look at uh, Phil Atlas once again, because the two of them will be battling for the first ever PCW Cruiserweight title. What are you doing? I'm looking for my turtle polish for his head. Sorry. When we come back, we'll figure out somewhere to put him for a little while. And uh, we'll be back. A righteous maker, Rick Baker, will join us. It's not PC. It's PCW. Powerbomb Championship, Championship Wrestling. Wrestling. It's PCW Powerbomb Championship Wrestling back in Toledo on Sunday, January the 25th. Sunday, January the 25th at the International Boxing Club, 525 Earlwood Avenue, East Toledo, Oregon, right off a of star and I-280. Doors open at 4, bell time at 5. Three huge title matches on the card. We got to fill some vacant titles. We will fill the vacant PCW Cruiserweight Championship as the Righteous Maker Rick Baker will battle Phil Atlas. We'll also fill the vacant PCW Tag Team Championships with the Asian Assassins taking on Justin Main and Jack Thriller. Also going to have Andy Shane on the card. You will see Will Studd, Chuck Wagon. They'll be on the card. But for the PCW Heavyweight Championship, the champion... Phil Nitro Monahan will have to defend against the number one contender, his former tag team partner, Malice, who now has a manager. And let's introduce him. He is the Mod Father. I've got one thing to say to you, Nitro. What you did to Malice shouldn't have been done to the lowest dog in the world. He carried you through many, many, many matches. You traveled down the road with him. You ate with him. You slept at his house. And then you got too big for your wrestling britches. I came across him. He was down on his luck. I took care of him. I let him stay in my house. 
I gave him a pillow to lay on. I fed him, and now I'm giving him some money. And now we're coming back. PCW, the heavyweight championship will be ours. The Mod Father will be in the corner of Malice as he challenges Phil Nitro Monahan for the PCW Heavyweight Championship. Get your tickets now at PCWExcitement.com. That's PCWExcitement.com. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. It's Sunday, January the 25th, International Boxing Club, 525 Earl Wood Avenue, and you are not going to want to miss it. Somerset Bingo Hall, Toledo's premier bingo hall, seven nights a week at the corner of Douglas, Lasky, and Tremainsville. At Somerset Bingo Hall, doors open at 5 p.m., lightning at 6, and series at 8 p.m. Sunday's doors open at 11 a.m., lightning at 1, and series at 2.30. Somerset Bingo Hall, Toledo's premier bingo hall, seven nights a week. Great day for cooling, yeah, sun setting tonight. Back we are, PCW Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. I'm Norm Weimer, and we've brought in uh, the former PCW heavyweight champion. You may have known him at one time as D-Ray 3000, as I've told everybody, going by his uh, real name, which is Rick Baker, uh, the uh, righteous maker, Rick Baker. Hey, where did Andy Shane go? He, uh, he went and took a break. Well, I was hoping to catch up with him. I figured you yeah. were. I'll, That's I'll, why I'll we figured it's not a good idea. Hmm. Right now, you guys have a long history. Yeah, we we, we have some yeah. catching up to do. I mean, we haven't uh, we haven't seen each other probably in a, a year. Yeah, it's been it's been it's been a minute, you know. But now you know PCW is back in January twenty fifth. <laughs> Phil Atlas won't be so lucky like the match we just watched. But I mean, I'll you, tell you that right you, now, you seem like a different guy. I mean, it, you've been and to be fair, you've been through a lot. You know, you, in, in in Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. I've been through a lot, not only in Powerbomb Championship Wrestling, but my entire wrestling career, Norm. You see, everybody's saying, why are you being so angry? What's, what's this new attitude about? You know, I'm just tired of being walked on. I'm tired of being stepped on, and I'm not going to take it anymore. You know, I'm tired of being underrated. You know, I, I, I uh, you know, since day one, when I said I'm going to be a pro wrestler, I meant I'm going to take over the world, not be somebody's joke, okay? And now is my time. No, now is my time to make that happen. What, and I'm going to start right here in PCW. What was your thoughts when you heard that there was going to be a uh, cruiserweight division? I thought it was great because I know nobody can beat me 225 pounds and under. I'm the top of my game. So bring it on. I, you know, it could be a Phil Atlas. That's fine. Whoever you want. Go, go get somebody all across the other side of the planet. Whoever you want. You know, call up the commissioner. Whoever it is, I don't care because I'm going to beat them. Like I said, I'm going to beat him. Well, you're somebody who, who's never shied away from wrestling anybody. Any, anybody. And it, you've always uh, wanted, seemingly wanted to wrestle the best. Yeah. Phil Atlas is one of those guys yeah. on that level. I, yeah. I don't think you would argue that. On that level. You know, you, you always hear about everybody on that level. You don't hear about the righteous maker being on that level. But guess what? January 25th, I'm going to go beyond that level. So come, come on, I'll buy these tickets. You got to witness this. You know, PCW's back January 25th. The Righteous Maker ain't playing with nobody. You know, you see, I don't want to come off like the bad guy here. I don't want to come off as this angry dude. But, you know, love me or hate me, I'm going to be who I am. So January 25th, if it's Phil Atlas, if that's who I got to beat first, then let it be. Well, we're going to take a look here at Phil Atlas as he battles Chris Corvus, and then we'll get more comments here. Uh, from Rick Baker about the uh, about the big uh, cruiserweight title match coming up on January the 25th. Let's take a look at uh, Phil Atlas against Chris Corvus. PCW Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. Sean Boomer Bratton along with Norm Weimer. Phil Atlas who has had you know so many fantastic matches here in PCW taking on Chris Corvus, correct? Yeah, so what do you know about Chris Corvus? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Not a thing. I could barely pronounce the guy's name. I was leaning on you for help on that one. Thank you very much. I'm going to tell you what I know from Chris Corvus. Reno, Nevada, 187 pounds. Well, I, I wrote off your notes. Well, and here's the thing. PCW is uh, getting bigger all the time. And as a, as a uh, 
organization gets bigger like PCW, there's more and more people that it will attract, more and more wrestlers that it will attract. And as our roster has grown and gotten better and better, then it will bring more people in that will want to challenge these guys. And, and that's Chris Corbis. Chris Corbis is a newcomer to PCW. He comes in and he wants to make his name a name for himself, and he would if he could beat Phil out. Yeah, that's a tough task. And I kind of feel bad because uh, I actually saw Chris Corvus earlier and back, and I thought he was with catering. And uh, I wonder why I never got my drink. Now I know why. Wow. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Now he's going to be mad at me for real. Wow. No Look wonder that. you were berating the, the bartender <laughs> here at Headliners. And this is all Phil Atlas. And, you know, you know, I suggested shots earlier over there. They said, Norm's buying. And I went, no, Boomer's buying. And uh, you never came back. Well, they know I'm not good for it. And look at that, you know, let's talk about Phil Atlas, and as opposed to my drinking, okay? <laughs> we can just leave that aside. That restraining you order. You dropped your umbrella on the, <laughs> yeah. on the ground there. <laughs> you know, and Phil Atlas, you know, we've seen so many uh, just great matchups with uh, with Crimson, with uh, Manabu Soya. You know, so many uh, wrestlers have tried to beat Phil Atlas, and well, you know, not many are successful. At well, he's got, that, he's got that Japanese-style background, too, and, and he, is, he is quick, he is athletic, he is... Uh, uh, I mean, he right now Chris Corvus has got the upper advantage because he's got Phil Atlas right where he wants him. He's got him in the middle of the ring. Exactly. He goes off that middle rope, doesn't uh, really hook that leg, doesn't put Phil Atlas away. And uh, you know, Phil Atlas has that unique uh, Japanese background where he actually went to Japan and really learned his craft over there. And look at this. Oh, Phil Atlas, boy, he is strong right now, just firing back knife edge chops. Chris Corvus goes for a ride up. There's a reversal. Oh, and that God. big back elbow. Could Chris Corvus pull off the upset? Boy, Chris Corvus has been impressive here so far. He really looks good. He's been very aggressive. Usually you'll see a lot of like newcomers here in the uh, in, in PCW uh, you know, a little bit tentative because all of a sudden they are in there against guys like an Andy Shane or a Phil Atlas or a Crimson. And yeah, it's very intimidating. But boy, Chris Corvus is just doing whatever he can. Has Phil Atlas up on that top rope. What are we going to see here? Maybe a superplex from the top? You got to be kidding me, Norm. Oh, Phil Atlas wisely holding on. Look at that, holding on to that top rope to make sure that that superplex doesn't happen. And he throws Chris Corvus back into the ring. And Phil Atlas is perched right where he wants to be. No strings into the top rope. Comes off that top rope. Look at that. Big body press. Look at that elevation. Oh, he was all over Chris Corvus. And Corvus is reeling. Atlas goes into the corner. Jumps through the middle and top rope. Hits him with the clothesline. Now Phil Atlas once again just real quick up to that top rope. I think this could be it here, Norm. Atlas was 15 feet in the air. What's coming here? Oh, look at that missile drop kick. Maybe took a toll on both wrestlers, though, but look at that. Huge nip up from Phil Atlas. He's not even out of breath. Ridiculous. Has him set. What are we going to see now? Oh, Corvus is trying to block it, maybe. Throws an elbow right into the kisser of Phil Atlas. Atlas catches him, spins him around. What are we going to see there? Code breaker. Oh, Curry. Oh, that's got to do it right there. How much more punishment can this guy take? And a super kick. Oh, yeah, that's I it. I guess that's about it. Yeah. Well, everything happens in threes. And there's your winner, Phil Atlas. Code breaker into an Enziguri, into a super kick. Phil Atlas, very impressive here in PCW Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. You will not see a better technical wrestler than Phil Atlas. You win of the match, Phil Atlas, who will be uh, battling this guy, the Righteous Maker, Rick Baker, coming up on Sunday, January the 25th. International Boxing Club, 525 Earlwood Avenue, East Toledo, just off a of star and I-280. You can get your tickets right this second by going to PCWExcitement.com. It's PCWExcitement.com. Hmm. Well, you know what? Phil Atlas won that match. You know, it was the walk in the park. But you see, I hope January 25th he's ready for me because it's not going to be so easy, Norm. I mean, come on. Yeah, the guy, they say he's so good. He's so great. But see, January 25th, he has to take on me, the righteous maker, Rick Baker. And there will only be... There's only one person that could be the first PCW And you're Cruiser looking at him. Again. You're looking at him. The whole world's looking at him. Phil Atlas, I hope you're watching this. You see, I've been studying you. I hope you're watching this. Because those matches you had before, that's nothing compared to what's going to happen January 25th. 
You know, everybody's saying they hope this is the match that steals the show. This is the only match you're going to talk about after I beat you and I become the first PCW Cruiserweight Champion. That's what the insiders are talking about, and, and I tend to agree with them. That, talking about well, I, I, I agree with you. Yeah, you bet. Hey, because you, you guys are two of the best there is, and you've won titles all over the place. Okay, on another note, Andy Shane is still in the building, right? Yes. Okay, so his, his car is still parked here, right? Yeah. Okay, okay, that's good to know. That's good to know. Well, you know what? Well, let's not have any hostilities here. Let's, well, let's look, this, this is a nice place. You know, this is a nice place. I hate to tear it up. You know, especially getting off on a bad foot like that. You know, this PCW. I want things to go right. Yeah. Well, I'll, 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 I'll put up a smile just like Andy Shane. How about that? Righteous Maker Rick Baker, he will take on Phil Atlas coming up on Sunday, January the 25th at the International Boxing Club. I got somebody I got to find. We'll take time out, come back, and we'll get you our uh, main event here coming up on this edition of PCW Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. It's next. Since 1905, Red Wing Shoe Company has been making purpose-built work footwear. The skilled employees in our three U.S. factories build over 1.2 million pairs of shoes annually. We are the largest Red Wing shoe dealer in northwestern Ohio, with over 2,500 pairs in stock. Stop by our newly renovated store at 2122 North Reynolds Road. Shoes and boots that have served generations of hard-working people. It's the Beer Stube, located at 5333 Monroe Street. The home of the NFL Sunday ticket. Catch your favorite game at the Beer Stube. We have a brand new kitchen open daily for lunch and dinner at 11 a.m. At the Beer Stube, it's a Wi-Fi hotspot and enjoy free pool from Sunday through Wednesday and premiere karaoke Wednesday night through Saturday night. It's where bar, grill, and good times come together. It's the Beer Stube, 5333 Monroe Street, online at ToledoBS.com. Back we are, PCW Powerbomb Championship Wrestling. Your chance to see PCW live comes your way on Sunday, January the 25th, International Boxing Club, 525 Earlwood Avenue, East Toledo, Oregon, right off of Star and I-280. The doors open at 4, bell time at 5 o'clock. There is nothing like seeing PCW live and in person. Three big title matches on the card. You will see for the PCW Heavyweight Championship, the champion Phil Nitro Monahan to defend against his former tag team partner, the number one contender, Malice, who will have the Mod Father in his corner. Also, the Mod Father will be in the corner of the Asian Assassins as they go for the PCW tag team titles. It's a vacant title. They will battle Jack Thriller and Justin Maine. Also, first ever Cruiserweight Championship match. Phil Atlas to take on the righteous maker, Rick Baker. I cannot wait for that match. You'll see Andy Shane on the card. You'll see the big guy, big Broderick Shaw on the card. And also, Will Studd, the first PCW champion ever in a battle of 300 pounders to take on this guy. Big Chuck Wagon. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Is that on? Is that on? It's on. It's on? Hello? It's Hello? On. Hello? 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 Is it on, Norm? It's on. Hey, I'm Big Chuck Wagon. I can't wait to be there. But uh, let's get all serious right now. All right? Will Studd, he used to be the former heavyweight champion, and I'm training, and I'm coming for him. And when I win, you wait. I'm going to get all them youngins in there, and we're going to be dancing because I'm, I'm winning. I'm winning. Smell this. Smell this. No, it's Smell quite, that. No, no, it's quite all right. Quite all right. Big Chuck Wagon will take on Will Studd Sunday, January the 25th. You are not going to want to miss it. All right, man. Oh! Rick Baker's looking for me. I don't know if you know this, but I'm scared. I feel worried about it. Oh, my gosh. Maybe he can find my car. Oh, my goodness. But, you know, with that said, I think I'll get over it. Rick! Rick! You know where to be found. Isn't that funny? Okay, I'm sorry. Please go on. I didn't mean to air up. I apologize. My, my bad. Yes, you did mean to interrupt. <laughs> but you lived to interrupt. Maybe, maybe a little. Gosh. I'm just glad we didn't. We're, I'm just glad we didn't have any yeah, physical that, altercations. You know, and with that said, that. he's talking about he's, he's been uh, watching, watching Phil Atlas's matches. You know what? There's a difference between studying and stalking. I'm just throwing it out there. Just throwing it out there. Uh, on the level, though, I'm totally, uh, I understand your guys' history. I, I, I totally get it. Uh, and we don't. 
need to go into all that right now. But on the level, the ability of these two guys to battle each other for the cruiserweight championship, I mean, it's got a lot of people talking. I, I may get a little uh, eccentric occasionally, if you will, but you've never heard me say a bad Crazy. thing about Rick Baker's wrestling. Crazy. <laughs> about Rick Baker, maybe, but the man is one of the absolute best, most incredible, accomplished professional wrestlers there is, as is Phil Atlas. And I, I believe absolutely. he took your title at the he, he did. He did. I'm not going to say that there were no shenanigans involved, but... It is what it is. He took it. You know what? Not everyone wins every match. It happens. The difference is, is the real men get back up and just keep going. So I'm just telling you. Okay. Glad we got that out of the way now. All right. Let's, uh, let's go to our uh, main event here on tonight's uh, PCW. And uh, it is for the uh, PCW Tag Team titles. We're going back a, a few years. The Gentlemen's Club to defend against CIA. Here we go once again, the CIA and the Gentlemen's Club. Talk about guys that don't get along. These guys never got along from the get-go. And for God's sakes, don't let CIA take the mic and do an interview on the Gentlemen's Club because it gets a little spicy. I don't think that's going to happen here. All right, let's Great. take a look at the match. Gentlemen's Club defending their titles, their tag team titles, against the former champion CIA. And the Gentlemen's Club using the time to regroup on the outside. We're still seeing a lot of these cat and mouse games here in the opening minutes of this championship contest. And the sharp dressed man now is in the ring. Well, both Jason Harris and Sebastian Rose, very cer cerebral of wrestlers. And uh, they will do anything to try and get inside your head. Oh, yes, they will. And that's really been, you know, for, for both of their 10 years here in PCW, that's what they've always done. They've gotten inside their opponent's head, and nine times out of 10, it works. But will it work on CIA? Well, it better, because I don't know if they can handle CIA toe-to-toe. -to -toe. No. A fired-up CIA? I really doubt that. Collar and elbow, Titan gets that arm. Just look at that, really just wrenching away the arm and that wrist. Look at the way it's bent. Jason Harris trying to grab that top rope to break the hold. Oh, and Titan just brings him right back into the middle of the ring and puts another, another twist in just for good measure. Reversal from Jason Harris. Floats through, has him now into the front face lock. I don't know if I've ever seen anybody wrestle in a dress shirt. No, I wonder how many of those he has. Probably a lot. <laughs> I don't know. You can ask him. I, you know, I'm not really going to start bringing up his word. Maybe you can get an autograph, yeah, one exactly. autograph. Will you yeah. autograph the dress shirt for me? Because even after you dry cleaned it, I really can't imagine after a wrestling match you would want to wear it again. And now they've worked their way back into the corner as uh, the sharp dressed man was able to just basically uh, use a little leverage to pull Denzel Titan back into that corner. Clean break, I don't buy it for a second. Yeah, look at that. A little bit of a miscue on Jason Harris. Ran himself right into that corner post. Do you feel bad for him? Not in the least. No. Not in the least. Sebastian Rose is trying to call timeout, please. That does not happen. But again, it's one of those tactics that really just can aggravate your opponent because they have things going their way. They've got the momentum, and what you're doing is you're trying to stall to break that momentum. I mean, CIA doesn't want them accounted out, though, either. No, no, because you can't win the titles via account out. And I, I, I certainly believe that if it got to the point where the referee was getting, you know, seven, eight, nine, that CIA would be right back in there and uh, rolling the members of the Gentlemen's Club back into the ring. All right, now, the sharp dressed man, he means business right now. One falls victim to a drop toe hold. Hits face first onto that canvas. Once again, tighten on the arm, makes that quick tag. Here comes Black Velvet. Well, I'm surprised Jason Harris. Oh, look at that. I'm surprised Jason Harris got back in the ring. Usually he tags out right yeah, exactly. after anything bad happens to a him. A physical altercation, I want to stay far away from that. And now I don't know if he can tag out. No, no, that arm's just basically rendered useless at this, uh, at this point. Sent him on both members of CIA. Double back elbow. Oh, this is good tag team wrestling. Titan goes for a cover. CIA wants to isolate the injured man. And that's what they should do. And look at that, they are just staying right on that arm, which they've been working on. And yeah, Titan is not going to let that tag happen. They are all over that arm of the sharp dressed man. Another quick tag into Black Velvet. Once again, Jason Harris goes for that ride. He's sent in. Double hip toss. What an elevation north. They hip tossed him almost out of his dress shirt. Lots of quick offense here on the part of CIA. Come on, Where's the count? And look at that. Uh, Sebastian Rose came in. Basically booted off Denzel Titan. Boy, this is the hardest job a referee can have, handling uh, 
for wrestlers like this. Boy, I've never seen anyone uh, work an arm ringer like Black Velvet. He rings and then drops, putting extra pressure on that shoulder, on that arm. And boy, it's just really, it, it, it's got to take a toll on Jason Harris at this point. I think things are so bad for Jason Harris, he, he wishes he could tag out to the pit bull. I don't know about that. Okay, yeah, that may be taking it just a little bit too far. But anyway, he can get out of this, he'd be happy. Yeah, exactly. There's a whip in, reversal, and Denzel Titan is sent right into the knee of Sebastian Rose, staggers out and falls victim to a clothesline. But look at that, you know, Jason Harris now has made the tag, and he's out of the ring, but he's really holding on to that arm. I really say at this point, Sebastian Rose is going to have to do the bulk of the work, which he is doing right now. And Sebastian Rose is fresh, Norm. He's been standing out on that ring apron for a long time. Driving that boot right into the uh, neck, that throat of Denzel Titan, who has nowhere to go back up into that corner. Look at Sebastian Rose wiping off his boot. Boy, that guy is cocky. You know, he's been cocky since day one here in PCW. Trying to goad Black Velvet into coming into the ring, and it does distract the referee to where they, they're able to double team Denzel Titan. And there we go. That dress shirt has finally come off, and I think he's going to use that dress shirt. Yeah, he's not going to take this one to the dry cleaners. You might as well just get rid of it. Well, the ref didn't make him take it off. And look at that, Black Velvet is over there, and the referee, he's not going to let that, uh, unfortunately, it's, it's a flagrant rules violation, he's not going to let Black Velvet continue to do that. And meanwhile, the double team on Denzel Titan goes on. And Sebastian Rose quickly goes for a cover, Titan is able to kick out. Boy, and Titan feels good, but he still doesn't know quite where he is, but he's got enough to throw some offense in. At right Sebastian back Rose. to the eye. Yeah, the eye rake goes the, uh, the great equalizer. And a clothesline. You know, we've noticed over the last couple of months here in PCW, Norm, that uh, Sebastian Rose has really turned up the intensity. Yes, but you can still count on him to take a shortcut. Well, exactly. He was oh so close to winning that PCW Heavyweight Championship, and I'm sure he would love to at some point win that heavyweight title. But boy, he's got to feel good being one half of the tag team champions. Well, he wanted gold, he's got it. Yeah, he does. He And he proudly wears that gold around his weight. When he comes strolling into the locker room in that suit, he's got that gold belt right around his waist. Nice suplex from the sharp-dressed man goes for a cover. Black Velvet was going to be right there to break things up. The referee also right there. Sebastian Rose is back in. Earlier in the match, we saw quick tags on the part of CIA. We saw the isolation tactics from CIA, and now we're seeing those same type of tactics from the Gentleman's Club. Well, I think Denzel Titan's right arm is hurt. And they're definitely working on it. Well, they're doing exactly what CIA did to the Shark Rush Man. I don't know if he popped the shoulder out of joint or what he did. Well, you're slamming that arm basically down into the canvas, and I can't believe that Titan really has much onto those uh, those punches. You're just well, he's using his left down. hand to punch because... Uh, he can't use his right. No, and he's right-handed. Rings that arm, abdominal stretch maybe? Oh, now, we don't that's see this on that injured often. arm and injured shoulder. But boy, this is effective. And look at that, Sebastian Rose is holding on to that top rope for additional leverage, and the referee who is checking on Denzel Titan does not see it. Now look at that to get on, even, even more leverage. He's grabbed the hands of Jason Harris. But look at that now, Titan. Oh, I don't know how he had the strength of that arm to do that. But look at that, you can just see the pain on his face. And quickly from behind comes the sharp-dressed man. Referee's got his work cut out for him here. Oh, he does. This is one of those matches where you wish that maybe there were two referees out there, and even then two might not be enough. This is for the... PCW Tag Team Championship. And CIA, they have won those titles back for oh so long now again, saying that they rightfully never lost the tag team titles. Really were, uh, you know, felt bad after being left out of the uh, number one contenders match or the match that actually determined new tag team titles. But now they've got their opportunity, and they've had their moments here. But right now, it looks like it's uh, really in the champion's favor, Norm. Or maybe I spoke too soon. Couple of elbows delivered right into the midsection of Sebastian Rose. Titan tried to run off. Sebastian Rose grabbed Titan and just threw him right back down onto the canvas and now works again at that rear chin lock. 
CIA won their first titles by beating the Valentine brothers. And then they went on and beat Andy, Shane, and Crimson. Yeah, what a tag team that was. And that didn't last real long, did it? No, pretty Crimson combustible. Crimson doesn't do well in tag teams, does he? No. Can you imagine trying to talk strategy with him? Or even just trying to talk to him? And Sebastian Rose off the ropes. He's caught by a power slam from Denzel Titan. And both wrestlers are down. All in Black Velvet wants that tag. And, you know, for, for the sake of the champions, uh, the sharp-dressed man better get that tag as well. And Titan is there first. Sebastian Rose tags. Oh, Titan feels good. Sharp pressed man, met with a clothesline. And just an up and over drop kick. Velvet goes for that quick cover. Harris kicks out. And Black Velvet stays on top of him. Irish whip. There's a reversal. Off the ropes. He's caught. Slips out of it. Russian leg sweep. Oh, Black Velvet feels good again. Quickly going for a cover, but not enough to put away the sharp dressed man. And boy, Black Velvet, he has just been ready to go and he is unleashing everything that he has right now, Norm. This is the super kick. Sharp dressed man booted into the middle, off the ropes. Misses the uppercut. And look at that. That diamond cutter out of nowhere goes for the cover. And Sebastian Rose was right there, but Jason Harris was able to get a shoulder up. Now Harris has Black Velvet up on his shoulders. Velvet sneaks out. Super kick. Sharp dressed man goes down. Boy, this is so back and forth right we now. We could get him. We could have new champions. Do we have it? No. You've got to be kidding me. Oh. Underneath the bottom rope. And Black Velvet can't believe it. Denzel Titan can't believe it. That is the right call. Unfortunately. Yeah, unfortunately for CIA, that was a perfect opportunity after that super kick. And look at that now. Just grabbing a handful oh. of tights and whipping Black Velvet head first into that middle turnbuckle. Great leverage move. He knew exactly where he was and he got all of that. You can hear the metallic clang. But he misses though, hits his head on the corner post, falls back and rams his head again, the back of his head, into the head of Black Velvet. And now both of them are down. Both were staggered. They cracked heads. They're both down. Referees administering the 10 count. This 10 count favors the champions. And now here oh, comes Sebastian Rose. Sebastian he Rose can't get ready. What's Denzel oh, Titan going to do? Look at this. Titan is rolling over Black Velvet on top of the sharp dressed man. And look at that. The referee sees it. So the referee's wondering what Titan is. And oh, no. Look at that. Oh, no. Look at that. Sebastian Rose just rolled the sharp dressed man on top of Black Velvet, but the referee didn't see it. Now he's going to count a cover. No. You're kidding. No. Oh, my gosh. You, all, you hate to say it, but, you know, Sebastian Rose. That's a crafty. huge miscarriage yeah, of yeah, justice. Well, it is. It, it is. But Sebastian Rose, you know, came back into the ring and rolled his partner, the sharp-dressed man, on top of Black Velvet. The same thing that Denzel Titan tried to do, but the difference is the referee caught Denzel Titan. Didn't well, catch Sebastian and Rose. Sebastian Rose was the first one in the ring. And when they had the abdominal stretch, they were they were both getting involved. and Exactly. All Oh, and Titan can't believe it. He's taking his aggression out on the referee. And as well, he should. Well, no, he shouldn't. You you can't do that to a referee. I got to disagree with you there. Well, he's really... Uh, he, he Whether might the disagree referee on that. made we're, the right call yeah. or not. And we are treading on dangerous territory right now. You don't want to lay your hands on the he's referee. He's got to risk getting suspended is what exactly. he's going to do. Don't do it. I can I see the commissioner shaking her head. Yeah, she's watching this. And there are facets of the crowd that would like Denzel Titan to do something to the referee. You just but yeah. can't do that. If I was the referee, I would get out. I think that, yeah, he needs to get out of here. Heat of the moment, maybe for Denzel Titan. And I'm sure they will get another shot at those PCW tag. Gentlemen Club retain the PCW tag team titles. And um, I guess nothing really gets solved. By hook or by crook. Hey, it's your favorite way of uh, doing that. It's not whether you win or lose, as long as you always cheat. I think that's the way it is with them. Hey. I'm attempting to be a somewhat of a reformed man here. I'm trying to be a good guy. I, somewhat, yeah. It's 
<laughs> Just saying. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> You're not helping your cause there, I don't think. All right. Uh, we want to uh, thank our, our sponsors, uh, Seaway Marketplace, also Red Wing Shoes on Reynolds Road, uh, along with uh, the Beer Stube, the Toledo Academy of Beauty, and also the uh, Somerset Bingo Hall. So we thank you all very much for sponsoring. All right. I want to remind everybody, it's Sunday, January the 25th. International Boxing Club, 525 Earl Wood Avenue, East Toledo, Delta Office Star, and I-280. Go to PCWExcitement.com. You can get your tickets right now. Big main event has been announced for the PCW heavyweight title. Phil Nitro Monahan will defend his title against the mandatory number one contender. His tag team partner, Malice, will have the mod father in her corner. So once again, we got a weaselly little blonde-haired idiot manager Telling tell, someone, tell, me, tell us what you really think. Whispering in there, I, I'm trying not to sugarcoat it. I am trying, but you know, once in a while, nothing but sweet things come from my mouth. It just happens. So we got this little weasel of a blonde-haired jerkweed manager sitting there whispering in Malice's ear, causing all sorts of problems. You know what? The match is going to happen whether the Mod Father was there or not. But he's got whisper in his ear, cause even more problems. I'm looking forward to an incredible power match between these two. Your buddy, the righteous maker, Rick Baker, against Phil Atlas for the. Rick! Are you there? Let's not start oh, I'm sorry. anything else. I think he's gone. All right. Uh, they will battle for the first ever Cruiserweight title. Uh, we will have, uh, for the vacant PCW tag team titles, the Asian Assassins, which we're hearing they're going to have the Modfather in the corner uh, against Justin Maine. Jack Thriller should be a great match. Uh, the, the big guys, Will Stud, Chuck Wagon. That's where the immovable object meets the irresistible force. When these two collide, I want to, you know what, I'm going to take seismographic uh you know, testing of what makes when these two giant monsters collide. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, Broderick Shaw will debut, and you will be on the card. We've got a lot of big guys. Find your opponent. I don't know. Line them up, I'll knock them down. We'll take them out in the tall grass and shake them for change. All right. Uh, you can go to Facebook and find us there and keep up with the updates at, or go to PCWExcitement.com. All the links are right there, too. So have a Merry Christmas. Oh, well, you already had a Merry Christmas. Have a Happy New Year coming up. And remember, as always, it's not PC. It's PCW. Power Bomb Championship Wrestling. Hey, Rick, are you there? Rick. Cool to just